Straight Line is brought to you in part by the Toledo Clinic ENT, specializing in allergy, nasal, and sinus care. You're watching Straight Line with Dan Rogers, President and CEO of Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Welcome back to The Straight Line, and my name is Delroy Bush. Today, Dan, we're going to be discussing a little bit about the church and uh, how it plays into our community and how our everyday life. Yeah, no question, you know, because we've mm -hmm. talked about uh, the church, and we always talk about the church in some way on every Straight Line episode. But, you know, the reality is today we're going to be talking really about the local congregation. We're going to be talking about the gathering church. Usually, you know, when we talk about the church, we're talking about the church as a, you know, the body of Christ, because you and I are the church. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not a church, but we are the church. Today, we're really going to mind that down and really talk about the effectiveness of the local church and what what uh, we believe. We're going to dialogue with our guest today, Sam Melvin, who's the executive director of servant leadership here in town. Mm -hmm. um, he and I are going to get hopefully into a pretty elongated conversation about the effectiveness of the body of Christ and what are the challenges that are out there waiting for us to be a straight line to the crooked within our community. Okay, great. And it sounds like there is a lot of challenges right now um, in the church, I would agree. Well, you know, there is. In our community, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the big um, issue was, you know, abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody and his brother was either chaining themselves to an abortion clinic uh, or doing something about it, and that's dissipated. And now, really, frankly, and within our Toledo community, that's all but dissipated as a reality uh, relative to having actual abortion clinics within our city they're no longer existent. Um, the church, I don't think, is uh, in need of a cause, though, and I think we've spent several decades being very cause-oriented, mm. almost to the tone that uh, now we treat people like a cause. But you know, the body of Christ was not designed, really, to go from one cause to the next. The body of Christ was really designed to reverse trends within community. And I think that's interesting you say that because I think a lot of people can feel left out of the church um, based on those causes, maybe that they can't be good enough for the church. Well, look at you, Delray. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how did that happen for you? You were raised in a church, and yet as an adult, you came to Cherry Street as an atheist. Sure. Have you ever thought about how, how, did, how did the church, how did your local expression, um, and I'll say this very, very carefully, but how did they let you down? Uh, I would say the church uh, let me down personally um, in, in a way that I felt uh, personally like I was not good enough to be in the church. Um, I was, I, I sinned too much. Um, I was part of a church that maybe um, kind of focuses on the sin and um, I, I just felt like I could never be good enough and I had a lot of baggage. I had a lot of uh, issues per se, don't we all? Um, mm -hmm. And you know, maybe I had some addictive behaviors and things like that that um, were not church-like, um, and I had, I had, you know, the media telling me that the church was this, um, mm -hmm. you know, people um, really adamantly against uh, people like me uh, that weren't ready to belong to a church at that time. Okay. Um, so I had to go slow. Um, my relationship with God um, didn't come overnight. I didn't have a light bulb moment. I had more of a, uh, you know, slowly mm. learn to love God. Um, for me, that was important um, that I wasn't pushed in because um, I'm one of those people that have to make that decision on my own. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I should be quick to say to our viewers today, don't turn the channel. We're, this isn't going to be a bash the local church uh, show. As a matter of fact, it's going to be Ex the exact opposite. You will find in today's broadcast that we are actual fans of the local congregation. Mm -hmm. This isn't about uh, putting a negative spin on family, because that's what mm -hmm. church is. This is about helping you and I see the straightest line possible between problems and, and um, solutions within our community and how the church really is that straight line in the hand of God so that our community can see Him in ways that He yearns for them to see Him. In the meantime, why don't we take a quick look at this video and it will help demonstrate what we believe you can do through Cherry Street and frankly, how we see you as standing in the fire of other people's opportunities. Let's take a look together. Imagine being tossed into hell. Imagine standing there. Imagine the heat of it, the flame of it, the worry of it. Now imagine someone is standing right beside you because they are. And you know they're not there for any other reason than you. That is Cherry Street Mission Ministries. We stand in the hell of other people's choosing on purpose.
I think one of the greatest things that you and I can face every day is simply to realize that God has not called us to the gate of hell as much as he's called us through the gate of hell, you know, because that's where the gospel of Jesus Christ shines the most. Now listen, I'm not at all saying that um, if you've never experienced really going into the fire of another person that you're not a Christian, I don't mean that at all. As a matter of fact, I think all of us here today, you included, have been in the fire uh, where you have needed someone to stand with you. All of us have experienced God in that way for sure. I love what David says when he says, if I find my bed in hell, I will also find you there as well. You know, God is not ever embarrassed to be in the trouble of our lives. As a matter of fact, he yearns for it. And that is the great opportunity before the church today is to absolutely equip themselves for the fires of hell. The key, Sam Meldon, is that we don't insulate ourselves in the process, that we, we say, look, if we're going to follow God into the fire of someone's life, let's, let's go in that stripped down version of God himself, right? And so uh, Sam Meldon, the executive director of Servant Leadership, thank you so much for being thank on you. our broadcast today. This is an exciting topic, and I've been looking forward to having this conversation with you. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about the church in this way. Um, I'm a really big fan of neighbors, the mm -hmm. concept of being a neighbor. And I think that when you, talk, instead of talking about the big C church, you yeah, go down yeah. to the local level at each individual church, you really um, have some opportunity there to compare it to how, how are we supposed to be a good neighbor? What does yes. that look like for each individual church? Well, I love the word neighbor since the Bible is really clear about, right. you know, Jesus, right? Like, I love your neighbor. And the mm -hmm. attorney's like, well, who's my neighbor? And we have this great story mm -hmm. of the Samaritan, right? Um, I also love the definition of neighbor, uh, Sam, because uh, Daniel Webster really straightened it out for us. It simply says the one who is nearest. Now, there isn't much to have, conversate after that to wonder who my neighbor is. Webster's just going, well, look to your left or your right. There he is. I do think it's interesting that you brought up the idea that 20 or 30 years ago there were these big issues that the church mm -hmm. was going after, and you brought up abortion and how that may not really apply locally anymore. Um, you know, I don't know how, if you really thought of yourself as a neighbor, okay. how you could end up so issue-based. Mm. Because I live on a street in West Toledo, and I have about... Uh, a handful, a few dozen neighbors that I could look at from my front porch. Okay. And they all have different issues that they're dealing with. And different things that you could easily make into a cause, right. I would imagine. Right. And so if I'm going to be a good neighbor to them, that means I have to be a lot of different things instead of mm -hmm. being one political cause. And so yeah. that's one of the reasons I love the idea of neighbor, even when you're talking about a group of people, a yes. smaller parish in a neighborhood, a hundred people, 50 people, yeah. or a larger church that has a lot of influence in one community. Mm -hmm. You know, Sam and I, uh, you're absolutely right. Sam and I, you and I were talking about um, my love for manufacturing. I, I never asked you if you shared that love uh, because it's a little bit freaky. Um, <laughs> but I, I like, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a manufacturing geek, to be honest with you. Um, I love going into a, pl a plant and just spending all day, right, into a manufacturing plant. I love it in two ways. I, I love the fact that we could do that, like we could like take raw material and make that. Uh -huh. I find that whole thing fascinating, but what I really find fascinating is the similarity between uh, what the manufacturer has to do, in most cases with zero tolerance, right, that that screw has to go into that, into that opening and it has to be precise. Uh, because so much depends on that precision, right? It reminds me of the way that God put my life back together, and it reminds me of the way of the thousands of people that in my career um, I've watched God just intricately be a precisionist in the way that he is so precisely puts us back together. How, how have you, you know, if I throw that yeah. concept on yeah. you, man, um, how, how, how does... How does that live in your world when we think about something so fleshly and so human as neighbor to neighbor? Well, I would say, I mean, the beauty of the neighborhood, right, is that I'm not, I, I think that the point of Jesus saying, love your neighbor as yourself, mm -hmm. is he's not saying, interact with your neighbor the way that I'm going to interact with your neighbor. Yeah. And when you talk about precision, I hear you saying how God works in your life in a very precise way. Uh, I think that that our job as good neighbors is to be around people as God's doing that in their life. Right. And I feel like often the church has kind of taken that task from God and said, you know what, we'll, we'll just do it. We'll take that, mm. that precise uh, action mm -hmm. on our own shoulders and we'll bear that burden on ourselves and we'll go and decide what people need in their life. How, but, do, how do you see that happening now? Yeah. You know, our, our city, Toledo, uh, is 
in that way, like a lot of cities within our nation. So there's a lot of similarities um, as people are watching this either locally yeah. or by the web. How are you seeing that happen? How are we displacing God in the intricacy of a life? Well, I think one, I, I honestly think that a lot of it stems from competition. Hmm. I think that a lot of it stems from competition. When you have one mile strip in any part of Toledo with five different churches, okay. and they're all kind of arguing and, and mm. you know, shouldering and elbowing each other for market share, yeah. and not really um, embodying uh, the, the spirit that I would uh, maybe articulate as being more Christ-centered or biblical or whatever language you want to put on that, yeah. when you have that competitive nature, that more free market approach mm -hmm. to being very relational, to being familial, to being of the family and the people of God, um, then I think it, it, it runs off. And so what happens is when you try to do the free market approach, you have to what? Have a competitive edge? Right. You have to take business terms and kind of apply that to your church? Well, I don't know. Yeah, and you can see that at almost every local level uh, right. relative to church. You can see over the last two decades anyway, that uh, the business language has definitely found its way into vision and vision casting. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that maybe I often refer to my generation, mm -hmm. and then I have people older than me say it's not a generational thing, so I'm trying to drop some <laughs> of that stuff. Uh, but I think that today's generation, mm -hmm. or maybe just in today's culture and climate, I think people's um, radar, their mm -hmm. ability to, to see through tactics yeah. is higher than ever. Yeah. And I think that, um, I was thinking about this, you know, this, the saying, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Sure, sure. I just feel like that applies so much to the church. Okay. It just matters not very much, actually, to the community around it, what they believe about mm -hmm. how people are living. Mm -hmm. It really matters how is it that they are engaging and living with yeah. their neighbors. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, uh, Sam, uh, let me give us a target today. Sure. In our conversation. Every day... I see such a dichotomy within uh, both the faith community and the community the faith community wants to reach and impact. And that dichotomy exists, Sam, where you have pastors that are really sincere. And I, frankly, have never met an insincere pastor. Really sincere, really in love with people, um, really engaged in what they believe is their mission and their vision uh, relative to community impact. And every single vision is about I want to make a difference in people's lives. Right. That's one end of it, Sam, against a backdrop of a community that you and I know and the pastor knows is really hell in handbasket relationship, right? I mean, uh, happily so. Uh, on that wide road that leads to destruction. And uh, what I want us to do today in our right. conversation is, can we draw a straight line for our viewers today? H how do we straighten that out? How do we answer this dichotomy of a pastor's heart and a church's heart to really reach their community and the community that seems almost um, uh, Teflon mm -hmm. to the message. What, what are some of the ways that, that you've envisioned that and in some of the ways that you believe as a member of the local church uh, we could do differently? What do we need to see differently? I wonder if, I really do wonder if it's an issue of equity. Hmm that over years and years and years of doing exactly what you said, being sincere, but maybe executing in a way that didn't come across that way at all, didn't okay. come across in a, in a very um, integrity-filled manner, uh, I wonder if we've lost equity. Okay. And I wonder, um, you know, I almost, think about, I almost think about a marriage, right? And so you take a marriage that in the beginning is this really, really sincere place. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really sincere combination of two people who love one another, they're made for each other and you go out 20, 25 years and they're jaded okay. and they're broken and they're not connected. Mm. They've lost equity. They've lost personal relational equity. And how do you build that back up? It's not one move. It's not one apology. It's over and over and over um, showing with your action, with your life, mm. that you're committed to something different in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I would love to see, you talk about a straight line, I wish that every church and every denomination and every sect and whatever would really consider this parish model. Hmm. Again, I go back to this neighborhood thing. Well, this parish model could you know, be really, really profound. You know, you're talking about ownership, right. right? You and I have had this conversation yeah, offline. Talking, yeah. You know, the, 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 you know, the one entity within society, at least, you know, historically as we all would understand it, is the mob. You know, the mob right. definitely has a parish mentality there's this block by block yep. ownership right like our our unit runs this block from 16th to 27th and 
here to there, right? And so those parishes bump up against each other. But if you're going to do business inside of that parish, right? Yep. You've got to deal with the powers that be. Also, there is there is at least some perceptive care right. for people. You know, That's they're right. they're you know caring. I mean, they're doing it yep. <laughs> in all the wrong ways. Right. But still, there's this parish model. You know, um, when you think about that crazy analogy, you know, that, that I'm now comparing the possibilities of the church with the mob, mm -hmm. you know, um, what are your thoughts? How does, what, does it, what does it do for you? Well, it remind, it's funny, you talk about the mob, and it reminds me of my favorite story about Jesus ever. Okay. Um, and I think this is one of the things that applied to his people, applied to the church, could be really profound. I love that when people are looking to find out if Jesus was who he says that he was, right? I mean, when they go to find that out, they say, who are you? What, are you the are you the one we've been waiting for? And he doesn't get into like some big theological treatise. He doesn't go back into the books. He doesn't cite his sources. He does. He says, "What do you see? Hmm. What do you see?" And that's one of the most profound stories for me. And I just wonder how many small neighborhood churches, if you were to ask their neighbors, "What do you see?" Yeah. How many neighbors would say, "I don't see much. Mm -hmm. I see some activity on the weekends, but I don't see much." Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think that if each individual local church could start to answer that question, right. what do our neighbors see from us? Right. Not like your neighbor, like when you go to work and at school. No, no, no. Our, our neighbors. Well, you know, Sam, unfortunately, a lot of people uh, that would hear this would be like, you know, once a year we have a sidewalk. Uh, yeah. We take our church out in the parking lot. Trunk or treat. We're, block being, part, yeah. we're being visual right. to our community. Um, you would no, no doubt applaud that as a good move. I don't hear you saying that though. No, no, it's not. I don't because I think that's a tactic. Okay. I don't think it's a posture. Okay. I think it's a gesture. You're not really talking about doing right. something. Right. You're talking about being something. Yeah, and unfortunately, there are some real issues here, right? I mean, what yeah. happens is you have inner city or more urban type settings that I'm more familiar with, right. where people, families have been going there for 50 or 60 years, and what happened? Right. They moved out in different places, developments happened, and they moved away, and now right. they're still driving in out of loyalty to that congregation, which is really, really wonderful. Right. But when you talk about being a good neighbor, it doesn't really apply. But there are no neighbors Absolutely. really left in the church yeah. building, right. the local congregation, any longer. So I know there's struggle there. Yeah. I know there's struggle, but that's why I love the way you started this mm. episode with. I love that you said it's not about the big C church and it's not about right. simply our individual action regarding our faith. It really is about these local yes. churches. Yeah. And I think in those in those pockets of people, whether it's a leadership team or a board of elders or a vestry yeah. or whatever it may be, they have to wrestle with the question, there's an apartment complex across from us. Mm -hmm. Right next door, there mm -hmm. are people that we know are struggling. If we leave, will they notice we're gone? Right. I think that's an important question. Right. Well, you know, Sam, you know what I do for a living. Most people uh, that are watching the show know that, you know, I'm happy to serve uh, as, uh, at Cherry Street Mission Ministries. Most people would recognize us as being um, an organization that serves the homeless population. Of course, you know, we serve all peoples, but certainly we are, we are known uh, for uh, being available at uh, real critical times in people's lives through homelessness. Right. Um, you know, you and I know that uh, the age of the cause uh, really has to go away, right? right? That we've got to stop treating people like a cause, right? We've, we've had generations of this now, right? Where, um, you know, I, I look at it historically, Sam. You know, 80 years ago, you know, we didn't really have the word homeless in the community language. Mm -hmm. we, it wasn't part of the, the, the community narrative. And now, you know, um, we have that. It's a new word. It hasn't been here so long that we can't reverse it. We, we, we must. Help our listeners uh, and our viewers today, Sam. Why must we? Burn the platform for us. You know, because you really can't help people see where we can go until we all see together why staying here is no longer a good idea. Why, Sam, is staying cause-driven as a local church? Why must that go away? Yeah, I think because... <laughs> You know, my um, my wife and I have been married for about seven years. Mm. We have two young children, and um, marriage is difficult. Is it? <laughs> yeah, go figure. <laughs> marriage is really difficult. Yeah, because my but, wife and I, man, 36 years, yeah, of heaven course. every day. Right, yeah. No problem. No worries, no problem. man. Yeah. But if you came to me and talked to Lindsay and I about marriage mm -hmm. as an issue, and you didn't talk to me about how I was as a father, you didn't talk to me about the way that I interacted with my parents and where mm. I'm coming from, mm. then it's over. 
Mm. It's totally over. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like dealing, we talk all the time about this offline, as you said, yeah. about the idea of poverty. Yeah. And we can, you can, you can feed someone or you can clothe someone, but if it's that and that's it, if that's your cause, yeah. it might do something for you, but when does it, when does it stop and when does it end? And so uh, I think that it's because it's always much more multifaceted. Yeah. Community issues are always more multifaceted than, yeah. than simply one thing. Yeah. And that's it why I love the me. issue of neighbor, right? I love yeah, the issue yes. of neighbor because one church doesn't say at First Baptist of Greater Toledo something. Yeah. I'm sure that actually is a church. I'm not picking <laughs> I'm sure on that church. sure there is, man. Right. I should have, I should have said 15th them. Baptist, right? Because <laughs> no one's the 15th. I don't think there is. 15th Baptist doesn't say yeah. we're only about this. Yes. Ideally, they would say that this is a diverse group of people made up of many different beliefs and backgrounds right. and histories. Right. So why try to funnel that into one thing? I think it's, a, it's, a, it's shortchanging the people of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I see uh, the cause-driven uh, ill effect every single day because people uh, that are serving, and, and I love them all, Sam, don't get me wrong, man. Uh, our donors, our volunteers, people that genuinely care, and I mean genuinely care for people, um, haven't yet uh, heard that it's okay to stop treating folks like a cause. You know, we're not trying to eradicate homelessness. We're really not. We're not really trying to end poverty uh, because we've had generations of that cause. And really in 2014, 50th year on the war on poverty, everybody knows, gee, we're not doing well on this topic, mostly because it's a cause. And you and I see every day, and we want our viewers and our church members that we love so dearly to see it as well that this is, we, we must go beyond the cause, must go beyond the label and say, man, this is a human being. We're all human beings. You said it best, right? You would not want to be treated like a person in trouble in your marriage. First, let's uh, be concerned about Sam. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I, think that, I think that if we can't address people as whole people, yeah. then how can we ever expect to kind of see whole people on the other side? Yes. That's a, that's a huge point. I hope we get there, Sam. I mm -hmm. really do. I, I hope we as a community uh, can find ourselves in a place that's um, faith community that, that's, uh, and here's the cool thing. We don't even have to change our theology for this one. You know, there isn't any, any challenge about our own church doctrine or church historicity that would ever be challenged by just saying, why don't we reach our neighbors and uh, let's don't be cause driven and certainly uh, Sam, let's don't be cause driven in the fact that the cause is I need to get them here. Right, absolutely. Right? That's a big one. How, how can we help churches stop getting people here, like in the sanctuary? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it just it just goes back to that market share idea. I mean, it okay. goes back to the idea that my my personal validity, my importance is not relative to how big my church is, if I'm a pastor, or how or how many people know that I go to this really successful church. It's not a club. It's not, yeah. I mean, Jesus had some pretty important things to say to <laughs> people when they lorded their status over yeah. other people. And often he would say that, well, the kingdom is yes. out there right. and you can play in here all day long, but the kingdom's out there. Well, Sam, it's, this is such a big topic. Yeah. I hope you're willing to come back of course. and have a conversation again. You know, as you watch a uh, straight line, we're not looking to solve in 28 minutes the things that face us. We're gonna have Sam back on. We're gonna chat more deeper about this. We'd love to hear from you as well. In the meantime, why don't we watch this uh, short video on how you change people's lives every day through your generosity at Cherry Street. You know what Cherry Street Mission Ministries from 1947 until this very day has always been about people. You people like you. People that come through our doors for a wider range of reasons. So when you financially and prayerfully support Cherry Street, you are actually making an investment in life revitalization. And I think one of the cool things about that is we're all about revitalizing and transforming every life that comes through one of our doors, no matter what the reason. That's the great thing about your support and your investment of Cherry Street is the way that lives are transformed and changed. You know, Del Rey, as you think about today's topic and uh, the local church, you heard me say to Sam, boy, we just can't get this done in 28 minutes and 30 seconds. So we're gonna have a, have to, a longer conversation about this. And we would really love to hear from you, our viewers, through our website and through the blog, uh, your thoughts and opinions about how the church can be on, get engaged beyond 
uh, cause and become a Church of Neighbor. Um, what was uh, top of mind? What did you learn today as you watched today's broadcast? You know, what, I think the most important thing to remember as, you know, just a human being in our world is that uh, community. It's mm. everything, um, whether it be your neighbor, whether it be the person at church, it's all part of your community. Um, I think we live in uh, neighborhoods where we have uh, privacy fences, uh, so mm -hmm. we don't have to see our neighbors. Right, um, right. We, we park our car cars in the garage, yeah. so we don't even have to go outside. Yeah, and our porches are on the back now. Exactly. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind kind of uh, doesn't help us in that in that mm. regard. I mean, it's it's hard to engage with people now. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't you agree? Oh, there's no question about it, Del Rey. Mm. I, I believe, so does Sam, and I've got to imagine there's thousands of viewers who would believe it as well, mm -hmm. that uh, the church uh, was designed for the more. Mm -hmm. And the more isn't necessarily people in the pews. The more is the thing that drives in our hearts, I think really because of the gospel, and that is to impact neighbors, impact mm -hmm. people around us. And so as you think about Cherry Street Mission Ministries and you think about the ways that you know, you could be engaged, you are a part of a local congregation. I guarantee uh, that most of you watching today, you've got your place of worship and your place of faith that you go to every Sunday. I'll bet you if you're like me, there's things you really love about it and there's things you really don't like about it. And it's mostly because you know people are involved, <laughs> you're, you're there. Uh, creating, I would bet, as much trouble for someone else as you believe others are creating trouble for you. And of course, you're tr creating as much goodness as well. You know, that's, that's church, but you know, for me, it's also La Familia, you know, it, it is family. Because when I look at the body of Christ, and certainly I look at this gathering, people that I worship with every Sunday, they're family. I mean, I love everything about them, and I dislike everything about them as well. That's, that's what happens when you and I decided to take a risk, get out of our seats, get out of our comfort zone, and go gather with other people. The point of today's show is to uh, engage you in possibilities, engage you in where your heart is to really see people as neighbors, not as a cause, not as somebody to fix, not as somebody uh, to conjole, and certainly not somebody to win, but somebody that you could just embrace and love, sit on their porch with, front or back, you decide, and be neighborly too. Do you know through Cherry Street Mission Ministries, you've been doing that for nearly 70 years. You have shown your love and your support mostly through your prayers, definitely through the generosity of you. Your time and volunteerism is invaluable. And of course, your financial support is incredible. Did you know $104 will impact 60 people uh, today, right now? I don't know where you could spend $104 and know that you impacted 60 people. And I'm not talking about food and clothing and shelter. I'm talking about love and belonging. I'm talking about those two things that are absent in a lot of people's lives, that if you can connect them there, you can connect me there, then you've won me for a lifetime. Del Rey, thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.